First Things First is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Things First. Jenna Wolf, Nick Wright, Brandon Marshall, Kevin Wilds. I hope you guys at home had a great holiday. I had a very restful holiday. The NFL did not have a holiday. There you go. They were in full Ooh, swing. No, no, no. To give us a much needed day after the holiday. So why don't we go ahead and start with the huge game last night. And it was a fun one to watch. In Green Bay, the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, Packers and Titans, and special guest star Mother Nature on hand for this one. She got to see Aaron Rodgers look like MVP Aaron Rodgers last night. She was so proud, just like my mom. Rodgers with four touchdowns, three to Devontae Adams as the Packers controlled the game from the get-go. Packers win. They improved to 12-3. and three. So, Brandon, I ask you, did last night yep. prove how tough a playoff road through Green Bay could possibly be? You saw what Titans had to deal with last night. Absolutely. I mean, look, <laughs> look at last night. Look at the snow falling down. You could see guys on a Tennessee tie frozen, and it absolutely matters. It reminds me of 2013, December 9th, 2013, playing for the Chicago Bears. I go out for warm-ups playing against the Dallas Cowboys, and there was no Dallas Cowboy on the field warming up. I think Daz Bryant came out in the tunnel, peeked out, and then ran back in. I immediately ran in the locker room and told the coaches, I told my teammates, I said, this game is over. And we went on to blow this team out. Everybody played well on the Chicago side, and Dallas couldn't wait to get back on the bus. So it absolutely matters when you look at teams like the Saints, the Rams, the you know the Bucks. They're going. This is going to be a problem for them. Absolutely, 100. percent There was tactics that we had to use to get through games like this. And and I go back to that game again, December 9th, 2013. I had fur in my cleats. My wife had to take fur. She had to take it to the shoe, the shoemaker, <laughs> and put fur in there just so I can get through the game. I think it's, it's a absolutely uniform violation. matters, Nick. I think that's a fine. <laughs> I think you just got yourself retroactively fined, Brandon. I'm not sure if the league allows that. Uh, Probably. Listen, if they finish off the deal and beat the Bears, because they got to finish off the deal, then they have to be the favorites in the NFC. And I want the audience to understand how rare this has been for Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, in his career, as of today, has been the one seed one time. Aaron Rodgers, in his career, has played a total of six playoff games at Lambeau. So for some context there, Rodgers has been the one seed once and played six home playoff games. Patrick Mahomes, has been the one seed twice and has played four home playoff games. That's not a Rodgers Jeez. versus Mahomes thing. That's a how well someone has been supported in Mahomes yep. and how poorly someone else has been supported in Aaron Rodgers. So under Matt LaFleur, this team is right now 15-2 and two in at Lambeau. If you include the postseason. 7-1 and one last year plus 1-0 and oh in the playoffs. 7-1 and one this year. They have been exceptional at home, and it almost helps in my mind that those two losses are, were against mediocre or bad teams. The Eagles last year and this year the Vikings, where it just feels like, okay, kind of a look-ahead game. So if they are able, Wilds, to win next Sunday in Chicago, they will be the prohibitive favorites in the NFC, and as an added bonus take, if they win in Chicago, Rodgers oh, will steal the MVP, which is rightfully Patrick Mahomes', but he Whoa. will steal it from him if they end up finishing it off by being the one seed. So, yeah, if you're a Packers fan this morning, you've got to feel great. you got to feel great. Interesting. Yeah, well, there's, interesting. There's nothing Cold, scarier than a confident team, and nothing says confidence like wearing a costume. So when Devontae Adams just <laughs> decides to break out a real crown on the sidelines and other people are like it oh, was this his birthday a birthday thing is it from burger king is it a shot at derrick henry it's like oh or maybe and this is something bill huber pointed out at si he's got kind of the receiving triple crown not totals but per game he's first in all these categories he's got 109 receptions he got 1300 yards he's got 17 tds so brandon 
I know people will say like, well, he's maybe the, the Packers offense is too focused on Devontae Adams. Like maybe you can shut him down. But even in that terrible game against the Bucs, he still had 61 yards and six catches. So I think they're a very scary team. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Um, I want your take on Devontae Adams. And if I can, Brandon, I want a little bit. I don't know why you just wouldn't wear another pair of socks. I don't know why your your wife became a cobbler and, and started like really messing <laughs> with your cleats where you could just wear a thicker pair of socks. So go ahead. Listen, listen, I had so many tricks. I had hoodies underneath my underneath my uh, my uniform where you couldn't see it just so I can have an extra layer of hand protection. I had so many things. Look, there's no real take on Devontae Adams. I was scratching my head last night watching this game, trying to figure out why myself and others don't have this guy as the number one wide receiver. Look, DK yeah. Metcalf's a beast. Uh, uh, Tyreek Hill's a beast. We don't talk about him enough, but this guy can do it all, and he has probably, well, the second best quarterback, maybe third best quarterback, depending on who you like, Mahomes or Russell Wilson. But I'm scratching my head, Jenna, figuring out why we don't talk about him more. It's going to be a fantastic win. All right. Let us talk some Pittsburgh Steelers. They would love it. Where the topic du, the topic du jour was a TikTok dance. That's French, Nick. Mike Tomlin was asked about Juju Smith-Schuster's pregame taunting dances on opposing teams' logos. And his own team's logo, which I guess was fine when they were winning, not so fine when you're losing, and so not fine when you become a target like Juju clearly became in Monday's loss to the Bengals. Here's Mike Tomlin. I am aware of it, and I do plan to talk to Juju, um, but we're professionals. I, I doubt any of those antics and things of that nature are, are legitimate motivating factors uh, as you step into professional stadiums. Um, but it's about respect, and, and so we'll have a conversation. Uh, but I understand it's about the quality of play inside the white lines, and so I'm not seeking comfort or looking for excuses uh, based on our recent performances on things that occur in pregame or things of that nature. Uh, that are social media related. All right, Brandon, all that being said, and despite what he said, yeah. should Mike Tomlin put the kibosh on Juju's pregame dances? I think so. And look, I agree with Mike Tomlin. It shouldn't be a motivating factor. I don't think it is. But the problem is, it's a, dist a distraction. So what do I mean by that? And, and you know, I saw this question, and I'm like, well, why, do, why am I the guy that's, like, uh, entertaining the no fun league? Remember, like, 10 years ago, 7 years mm -hmm. ago, we're all talking about the NFL needs to lighten up. Why is it me? Why am I the guy usually in the locker room or the guy on, on television when all the, you know, talking about, you know, I don't, wa I don't want to see this. And all the other talking heads are like, oh, we love this, we love this, we love this. And the more I thought about it, I just I thought about the game. I'm like, the game is so hard that everything else is just a distraction. Like you can go, you can go from playing lights out, like the Steelers have, 11 and 0, and then all of a sudden you look up, you're on a three game skid. You can play three quarters, be up, be up, be up three touchdowns, and then still lose the game. There's no room for anything outside of the game once the game starts. And that's why I feel like this is a distraction. That's why when we talked about this a couple weeks ago, I said, Juju need to stop this. Like, what is this? Like, the problem today is these guys are putting the fame before the game. That is the problem. That's a there Fred Taylor line. The problem is this kid is averaging 50 yards, less than 50 yards a game for the second year in a row. This is what we're doing. I wouldn't even, I couldn't even like have the mental capacity to think about these dances because <laughs> all I'm thinking about is not lose, losing my mind because I can't get in the end zone or because I can't go over 100 yards to help my team win a game. Uh -huh. Like that's what playing wide receiver is about. So when so I think about this, it's a distraction because the game is so hard. You could go from winning a game, dominating a game, and with a blink of an eye, snap of a finger, the game is totally different. All the mojos on the other side of the football field. Okay, so I'm, I'm a little bit torn here because I like fun and I, I actually like taunting even. I'll go, I'll go a step further. 
But when he got lit up, it was a storyline. And now Mike Tomlin's talking about it. So it's not a thing until it's a thing. But I'm going to show you another highlight, which is my favorite, it's sort of like, not underrated, but it's how the Steelers responded to the high-stepping interception. So get an interception, I could run it back. Let me start high-stepping here. Yeah, I'm doing it. It's Dion. Way out of bounds. Bang. He gets, you get a, he gets a late hit call because he's way out. Boom, have some. But it just felt disrespectful. But if I was Mike Tomlin, I'd be like, you know what? I like that. That's like Steelers football. And I know it's like maybe it's like I'm, I'm caught in like old Steelers like mentality. But I just like a tough team that doesn't want to get disrespected. And I feel like if you're going to play like this, then at the same time, the offense needs to have that mentality too, Nick. Yeah, I listen, I understand. I, I don't mind.